All right, let's keep the projects rolling. So, today's topic is gonna be headliners. My headliner has seen much, much better days. <laughs> and uh, it's gotten a lot worse over uh, recent months. So, first, we're going to have to take out the entire uh, upper board here. And um, since this has a rear hatch, it'll just come right out the back, so this is easier than most cars. Yeah, all we gotta do is take off all these trim pieces, and they're all just a bunch of Phillips head screws. Um, the, the little handles up there, those are held in with Torx bolts. I forget the size, I know they're kind of small, but um, you'll have to take them out. And uh, along with that, the dome lights and the, um, and the sun visors. All right, let's start all the way at the front of the vehicle. Um, you're going to have this big long strip here that's going to have to come down. You might not have to remove this section down here, but um, in order to get this out, there's two little plastic uh, covers that you have to pop out, like these. Just grab yourself a pick tool and just fish it in there and pop it out. You're going to have Phillips head screws. I already took this out once and I was smart enough to not put this one back in because it's hard to get to. Uh, in order to get to that, um, you either need some kind of flexible joint to get in there or what I used was a little right angle screwdriver that looked like an Allen key but with a Phillips head on it. That one got that out. But we can take this one out and then start working our way down the line. Alright, here's these handles. These are T25 Torx bits. Now in order to get to these bolts, you're usually going to find covers like these. They just wiggle off. Like so. They just kind of clip on there. So you just pop them off and you can get to your bolts. Alright, last piece in the back is this one. This one's actually metal. And again, it's just got some Phillips head screws up there. So, keeping track of them all. Most of these are the same, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, now we get to do the same thing on the other side. But for the most part, this whole left side should pop out. They're just all kind of connected together. If you like unclip them, then you could get them to go. You just gotta be careful. You don't wanna stress them too much so that they crack. They are a little fragile. So be careful with how you work on them. But you can see the lip that holds it on there. They all just kinda interlock, sorta. All right, to finish getting these panels off, you're going to take this back one and, like I said, wiggle it out. And then come over here and you're going to work it out of this little crevice right here. And then pull it and then split it apart. They just pull apart and slide into each other. Trying to take these, um, these side things out is not going to be easy. And I'm probably just going to end up breaking them. So I'm just taking all the weight off of them that I can and I'm just going to let them hang. Because they're out of the way now. I don't really need to take them out any farther. Alright, your goal with the dome lights is to get this thing off. That little metal uh, round tab. You're just going to use a pick or whatever and try and pry it out carefully. You can't really pull on it because the, uh, the roof comes with it. It's very weak. But, you know, once you finally get it down a little bit, you can use some pliers like this to work it the rest of the way. Be careful because it's going to want to go flying. And these are really important if you ever want to put the, uh, the dome lights back on, so don't lose them. Once you take out both sides, it'll come out. Uh, other recommendations, since you're working right next to the dome lights, disconnect the battery or pull the fuse or do something, because if you jump these contacts, you're going to uh, short out your dome light fuse. So, battery's disconnected right now, so let's take that other one off. With both those out, this just comes hanging down now. You're going to want to disconnect this. Uh, if you can. I think there's a connector farther back. Actually, no, you can just disconnect here and you'll be fine. Pop that out and then you can, uh, you're free in the back. Last step should be the sun visors. So we got two screws here and then don't forget about the uh, screws over here. When you can't figure out why your, uh, your sun visor doesn't come off, it's because there's three screws. One of them's just hiding. If you have lighted, um, sun visors you got one more step you got to disconnect these two wires so if you come right in here you can see these two there's two connectors back there 
that you just have to unplug and then you can run the wires through the top. All right, I forgot that uh, that side over there is cracked, so I didn't have to remove that one, but this one I did. You got two screws here and then one screw there that holds it to the bottom panel. And then you gotta take off the, uh, the support, which you can just wobble off. Make sure to hold the hatch, otherwise it'll fall on you. And you can just take it right out. Now we should get to everything that we need to get to for the headliner. You notice all these clips that hold it in place. It's got to get off the clips, I guess, and pull backwards. All right, I finally got some goddamn movement with this thing. This is a pain in the ass to mess with. It's so fragile. Um, right now, I was having issues with these clips. They're usually at 90 degree angles, but I bent it down so I can get it around because it just feels like it's stuck on everything. Now, these things, they could come out if you wanted to, but it's not easy. It's just two little marks like that, and I guess there's a tab in there that holds them together. But that's what holds them in place, so that's a pain in the ass. But you just gotta work it down and around everything. And it's held in the front by something, I'm not sure what. I don't know if it's sticky or what, but I'll find out in a second. Aha, found it. So it uses Velcro. But whether or not the Velcro will actually let go for you is a totally different story, and I'm guessing no, because it just ripped the, the fucking uh, the liner off instead. But it's all free, so now we can pull this headliner out through the back. Neat. All right, so this thing's all freedom fried. Delightful. Okay, so we're inside for just a little bit. I'm working on taking out all the uh, goddamn screws that the previous owner put in along with some of the uh, proper um, cloth things. So we're going to take out all the screws and then we can take the cloth off and see all the beautiful underneath. Now before you totally get rid of uh, all the cloth, make sure to check uh, where the holes are cut out. Um, on older models, you probably won't have to worry. Basically everything that's got a hole, you'll make a hole. But um, definitely for the newer ones that have uh, different holes for different uh, upgrades and, you know, different accessories, you want to make sure that you remember which ones are cut out and which ones aren't. So that's the first important thing. You don't want to be cutting holes in things that you don't actually have because that's going to suck. Um, second part, look for any overlapped areas. The only one that I'm really seeing right now is the front. So all the fronts overlap, so you want to make sure you leave a little extra uh, in the front when you cut everything to length. But um, besides that, that's all you got to worry about. So now you can get rid of all that. So, now you get yourself a brush and go to town. So, your main goal is to just get all the old foam off, everything that's loose, because you want the uh, headliner to be, this, this board, you want it to be clean and uh, ready for sticky stuff. So... Just trying to work all the old crap off. Simple enough. So, here's the before to something like this. Wasn't that easy. Alright, so I got all the crap off of it. it. Didn't take too long. That brush took that foam right off. That wasn't stuck on there at all. That was maybe like a 15 minute job. I just went through everything once and then I went through it a second time and just moved everything to like a corner to get all the little bits up. Okay, so here's the, uh, the headliner that I got. Um, this right here is what headliner fabric looks like. It's cloth or, you know, whatever kind of material they use. And then it's got a foam backing on it. And the backing kind of gives it support and makes it look all smooth and fancy and whatnot. So, I ordered this from WLS Headliners. It's just a company online and they actually had uh, kits that were specifically made for uh, SUVs. One of them mentioned was a Cherokee. So I figured, sure, why not? For 60 bucks, you get three yards of uh, fabric and um, a spray can of the 3M uh, headliner adhesive. So here's my original fabric here, and here's the stuff I picked up online. This looks a little bit darker, but remember this is also dirty and, you know, faded throughout the years, so I figure for going online, I think I match the color pretty well. And I don't really care if it's perfect, it's a fucking Jeep. Get over it. Lucky I'm going this far. So, let's take this over to the headliner board and lay it out. Okay, so we're going to take our headliner and lay it across the whole board. <coughs> the easy way and the proper way to do this 
is to center uh, all your cloth on your board and then what you'll do is take half of it and flip it over and do one half at a time so you know you don't sit there and spray the whole board and then try to get it on there because it's just not going to end well so just do it in halves it'll make it easier it'll turn out a lot better in the long run so we're going to fold this half over we're going to do three coats you're going to go two in one direction and the third in the other direction um, and then do the uh, the back of the foam and then we'll let this sit for five minutes or whatever to tack up and then we'll lay it on Hey boys and girls, it's Spider-Man! Whoa! <laughs> so, I'm on can number two now. I used the entire can on that. I found out, I think I got the spray pattern a little better now. You're supposed to hold it closer. Makes a much more smooth line. All right, so it's been about five minutes, so let's flip it over and see how it goes. Okay, so we're gonna take our fabric and flip it over and just kind of wipe it through and try and get all the, uh, the glue to stick. Don't stretch the uh, fabric at all because that might cause pulling later, but just do your best and make sure it's nice and smooth. Let's do the other side. Wouldn't be one of my videos unless it was dark out, right? Okay, so you just gotta remember um, any places where there was overlap. Uh, for this one, the only one that had any overlap was on the front. So we're just gonna cut that a little farther away than all these guys. But everything else you can just cut pretty damn near close to the edge. And I'm probably gonna have to do this one-handed, but you know. Just cut through it and uh, don't forget about your holes. Remember which ones you have and which ones you don't have. So it sucks to cut something out that you don't actually have. But you know, once you get through the foam, it cuts relatively easy. Having two hands makes this a uh, much easier job, but you get the idea. Here's the headliner um, fabric adhesive that I was talking about, that 3M stuff that came with the kit. Um, I needed a total of three cans and I used every single drop of all of them. I don't know if I put it on a little too thick or what, but one can just isn't enough at all. So, you know, be prepared to at least get two. If you buy the kit online that I did, order at least two and make sure, you know, if you got an auto parts store that has something like this or something similar nearby, or if you have something that you prefer, then buy that instead. But I needed three cans of this stuff with how heavy I, I was putting it on. So just be aware of that. <laughs> All right. Sorry I had to cut short last night. Bugs were getting terrible. But here's the finished product. It's kind of hard to make these cuts look nice. That stuff does not want to cut. But that's all hidden by trim, so I'm not worried about it. And the front's wrapped. So it looks all nice and pretty now. All the holes are cut. I cut them a little small just in case. I don't know how much whatever uh, covers is covering. This might get cut a little more. I'll have to look into it. But... That's pretty much it. So, now I can put this bad boy back in. Alright, so we got the headliner sitting in the back of the truck now. So, um, first we gotta get those clips off and uh, bend them back into shape. Alright, see if I can't put these clips back in, hold it up. Let's pop those lights back in. We're going to reconnect our connector here. Make sure that all the pins and everything come through. Line it up. Then take one of your pins and push it in. And do it again for the back. 
Okay. And you can put your light bulb back in and put the cover on. Look at that. Huh? Snazzy. Alright, before you get too far down the line, remember how you took everything apart in the order you did. So if you notice these guys right here are what's left of the um, the sun visors. Uh, with the electric sun visor, the powered one, you gotta make sure you run your wire back here and connect it. So, you know, don't tighten any of these panels if you have those, because you're gonna have to run back here and connect them. But after that, you throw them screws in, you put these guys in, and then your sun visor's all done. Ain't that snazzy. Looks a little shitty now. <laughs> That was all the uh, the grinding marks from when I was working on the floors, but the color matches pretty well. It's not terrible. It makes sun visors look like shit, but whatever. When installing these uh, grab handles, make sure that they go on this direction instead of this way. Because if you mount them like this, every time you get out of the truck, you're going to hit your head on it. And you're going to piss off all your friends. Ask me how I know that one. So, they go in like that. And you tighten down those two T25 Torx bolts, and then you can pop those little covers back on. Well, there's a few little wrinkles here and there, but for the most part, I think it looks a whole lot better than it did before. Much cleaner. Actually looks like a uh, you know, a normal truck again. So, I think it turned out pretty good for a, you know, a first timer. There's a couple wrinkles here and there, but um, you know, all in all, it's a hell of a lot better than what it used to look like. And that's all that really matters, right? So there you go. That's my little kind of sort of how to, how not to do your headliner. So, yeah, cool. <laughs>